do me a favor, let's share and invite and all of that good stuff. I'm so grateful to be able to connect with you all. God is faithful and um, yeah, <laughs> he is so very, very faithful. So here we go. Um, welcome, welcome. Do me a favor as you come in the room, share and invite and all of that good stuff. I want to say welcome to all of the new subscribers. God bless you and a very, very warm welcome to you and all of those of you who have been rocking with us for a while welcome back i'm so grateful for you and um so uh god is good happy friday happy friday i pray that your friday has been wonderful um mine has been good it's been busy over here in the neighborhood um i also want to say happy passover to us so today is officially the first day of passover and we're entering into Purim tomorrow. And so that's what this word is about today. Um, just want to prepare us and uh, make sure that we're aware of the timeline of Almighty God. So as you come on in the room, I do appreciate uh, the likes, the thumbs up. They help us continue to get this video generated where it needs to be. Um, and so I praise God for each of you. Blessings to you, Lady Alira Hair Care, Lady Shalene. It's been a minute. Welcome, welcome. Hey, Lady Ayana, God bless you blessings to you lady melanie welcome i appreciate those of you as you join in and you know for you continuing to come back and those of you please do me a favor let's like the video um it helps us gain traction over here in these youtube streets um blessings to you lady lisa welcome welcome as you're coming in the room if you want to you can let me know where you're coming in from what city you are from and all of that good stuff before we get started uh, i do want to release this right now word from god and what he is saying what's available to us right now so blessings to you brother isaiah hey lady jennifer welcome blessings to you brother ray god bless you one and all, I'm grateful for our presence today. I'm thankful for what our Father and our God is doing. To those of you who are still on your consecration, God bless you. You can do it. We can make it. Um, and all of that uh, from Chicago, Chi-Town. Quite a few people from Chicago, so I'm grateful for that. Blessings to you, Lady Evelyn. Welcome, welcome. Crown Crew, you better come on through. Um, from Cincinnati, wonderful. To God be the glory. Um, Lady Galathia, what city are you from? Let me know. Let me know. Um, give us about 30 more seconds before we jump in. Blessings to you, Brother Jonathan. God bless you. Blessings to you, uh, the Black Mamba Goat. Okay, welcome. Hey, Lady Faith Dobson from Virginia. God bless you. Stay focused. God bless you, New Jersey in the building. That's what's up. Uh, Monroe, Louisiana. Okay, Lady Galathia, I thought you were from California. Um, so welcome one and all. Welcome, welcome. Um, you guys, there's been quite a few shares, so I'm, I'm grateful for those as well. Uh, we definitely want other people encouraged in the body of Christ. So I am looking forward to us beginning today. Um, blessings, 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 one and all. So let me just jump right in. It's interesting. It was just like uh, three minutes and 32 seconds. The threes and the twos. God is just doing a work. Um, blessing to you, Lilith Gotcha from Rockport, Texas. Awesome. And so, um, uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and jump in the threes and the twos. So today is uh, March the 22nd, uh, 2024. And I want to highlight that because God is highlighting that day. Um, I spoke of and I did a short for those of you who are subscribed to our channel, you'll get some of the, you know, the 60 second words and, you know, a couple minutes and that kind of thing. Um, and it's going to be able to put things into bite sized pieces. But in addition to that, there's some things that I don't always mention on some of our longer teachings and lives. And so uh, I still want to be able to share what God is saying, even if it's just a snippet of what he's spoken. Blessings to you, Lady Tanee. So good to see you. Please tell uh, the hood princess I say hello. Um, so, yeah, um, with that, as we are looking into what God is saying, uh, yesterday I released a message um, and you can go back to that. Um, but God impromptu gave me the scripture. It was a rhema with regards to Habakkuk 1 and 5. And so I want us to highlight that a little bit more in detail. There's another thing too, as we release the word about the countdown is here. Hey, Lady Shatara, I love you, woman of God. Crown crew, come on through. Um, 
um, with the three, two, one, and the countdown is here. And so I was like, okay, Lord, I didn't mention, you know, this number because I felt led to, uh, to speak what it meant in the Strong's Concordance, but there is no coincidences in God. And so today it was necessary for me to also release the three, two, two. They actually are connected. And so as far as what I'm releasing, and so they come one in, um, one in hand. So the announcements are coming. Don't choke announcements are coming don't choke and I feel like there's so many times that people we as the believers of God can have hope deferred in certain areas then there are other times where you know we are overcoming whether it be the fear of rejection or the fear of you know abandonment or you know are people going to be okay with this or that and so as they are in that place and that stage and that frame of mind you know God wanted to encourage us because it's not too late it's not too late it's not over and or any of those things and God is in the place we are in a divine timing we are in a divine portal and so as per that word uh, yesterday with the countdown is here speaking of the 321 March 21st um, and he led me to Luke chapter number three verse number 21 and I'm not going to speak all of that message but I want us to be able to have foundation for where we're going and so in that scripture it says you know that's when Jesus was being baptized and it says that the heavens were open the sky opened up and then the Holy Spirit descended as like a dove and when he did so too was there a voice saying this is my beloved son in whom i'm well pleased in the message translation it says this is my son or inherited one is what that is uh represented so that's you me a son and daughters of god it said my love marked by my love chosen and marked by my love my pride of life and so when you look at that you being you know god's chosen you being his pride the pride of his life you know his purpose for creating you in so many things that god has created you to do and so we're in this divine portal that God is speaking of and of course it will be so incredibly linked as far as the timing that we're in so today mark the first day as far as Passover in addition to that we've already begun you know those of you who are participating in the fast of Esther as we commemorate that we also will step into Purim as of Sunday on, uh, on tomorrow. And so this is a divine timing of Almighty God as far as what is available and what is happening um, even in the body of Christ. And so that's where I want to start with. He said there's this portal that is open, that is available to the body of Christ, to the body of believers, to those of you who, you know, you love God, who are the called according to his purpose, you know, those who are chosen and marked by his love. And we know that we are a chosen generation. We are a royal priesthood. That's who God has made us to be. And so this is for you, beloved. Those of you who have been tested, you've been tried, and you've also proven that you are trustworthy in this season in Jesus' name. And so with that, Habakkuk chapter number one and five, this is going to point toward the things which are coming because announcements are coming. I want to release the measure of what God is speaking to me to share with us today of what announcements are coming in that capacity, right? And the necessity that you don't choke. This is not a time. I, I believe it was like towards the end of last year, God started speaking to me about failure to launch. And that's a movie. And in this movie, it's a gentleman. Um, why can't I think of his name right now? Um, I really appreciate him. He's also a believer. But in this movie, it talks about, you know, he's still at home living with his mom, you know, and all those kind of things. And what they linked it to was a failure to launch. And so she hires this woman, you know, um, to be able to, you know, end up getting him to get out of the house. And so this woman, you know, that's one of her specialties, but she ends up falling for him. They end up falling in love. Of. Nonetheless, the efforts end up working. But um, I wanted to highlight that because I believe in different areas. Thank you so much, Matthew McConaughey. Appreciate you. Um, I'm like, why? All I can do is see the M. You guys, God deals with me in numbers, and sometimes I will just see letters, but I couldn't remember the name. Um, so praise God. Thank God. Um, and so uh, with that, it ends up inadvertently working. He doesn't plan on falling for her. He doesn't plan on, you know, because he finds out that, you know, it's a scheme, you know, that his mom has started or whatever. And he is like, I ain't gonna fall for her. I'm just gonna play the game. And so they both end up playing each other and they all both end up getting played because there's this thing, you know, love, 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 love is real. And this was not supposed to be a love word or a love month word, but 
Here we go. We're chosen and we're marked by God's love. And, you know, this shall all men know by um, that you are my disciples, by the love you show one to another. So nonetheless, um, she ends up having, you know, these ways about herself. He ends up not falling for it. They end up playing each other and they both get played by love. And I'm telling you that love is on the mind of God, obviously, because here we go again. Um, so announcements are coming in various capacities and we cannot afraid to choke. Um, there are often times where you find different opportunities and things that you desire so much from the Lord. And I believe that this word is for those of you who are believing God for, you know, various promises, whatever it is you're expecting for your business to, you know, finally get off the ground. You're expecting for your ministry, you know, for God to move in a special way. You're expecting for, you know, things to begin to work for you in different areas, but there is something that begins to hold you back. And, you know, maybe there are some of you who have been dealing with a sense of procrastination procrastination. And, you know, maybe that procrastination is rooted in fear. You're afraid that it's going to work out. You're afraid of how, you know, if if, it, if you're afraid that maybe, you know, it's not going to work, it's not going to happen, or maybe it's not going to happen for you, or maybe they're not going to choose, choose you. There are so many that are, you're, and you are afraid. I feel that so strongly, afraid of being chosen or selected. You know, are, are they going to favor you? Is it going to work for you? And God is saying, you are my chosen and when you operate you know in in him and when you operate in what he is desiring to do he is the one who puts the super on your natural and you know there are reasons if we're going to speak of and I want to give this example um the movie Hitch with um Will Smith in it you know and in the movie you know the guy the, there are different men and, and it's interesting they um end up hiring you know Hitch to help them get Hitch with who they want to be with right and so he gives this gentleman you know all these different ways it's going to work for this one and, and, you know, it ends up, she finds out that he, he hired someone. And so she breaks it off with him. And, you know, at the end she goes, so did you make all these things up? Did you plan all this? And it happens to be all of these quirky things, right? You know, how he danced and Will has said, don't you ever do that. And then it was like, you know, he dropped mustard on himself and, you know, all these kind of things. And so it was all the silly things, all the awkward moments, all the things that were true to his nature. And are there some of us in different capacities, whether it be concerning a job, whether it be concerning your business, whether it be concerning your branding, you're trying to do what people have told you is going to work. You're trying to show up a certain way, but it's not genuine. It's not authentic. And it's like that genuineness of who you are. That's what people want. I, I learned in Mary Kay is selling as a director that, you know, people buy you before they buy anything else. They buy you before they buy your product. You know, do they like you? You know, you authentically as a person. And there are people that are picking up on discernment. And so, you know, you sniff out the real, you know, and even if you can't put your finger on it, it's like just something, I don't know. And so that's what they end up saying. I, I just don't know. It's something. And maybe is it possible that it's something they don't trust about you because you're not showing up as yourself? Like, who are you anyway? I don't even know who you are. And so that genuineness, you know, that quirkiness, you know, that geekiness, you know, whatever those things are, that's literally because, and that's how you know who your tribe is, because those who are assigned to you, those who are intended to rock with you, they are going to appreciate the you that God created and not one that life made, not the polished version of you that everything is perfect. You know, for me, I have, you know, been a perfectionist, you know, and with that, it can be so debilitating in ways. And so, intentionally you will see some of my videos where I will you know I might misspeak I might whatever because it, it's it's me being able to be authentic and being genuine and also to show people that it's okay to not be perfect and because I will redo something a million times to get it to its most perfect and I remember someone once told me that it's better done than than perfect because in the effort to make something so perfected sometimes we fail to do it anyway because of you know this excellence attitude that's beyond you know and so you're going so far to try to be so perfect and so right and have all of these specificities and I'm not saying be haphazard and I'm not saying be mediocre because by no means is that what um what my goal or my effort is again 
coming from being a perfectionist, but it's better done than, you know, perfectly waiting in your inbox or in your drafts. And some of us need to know, go for it and let God put the super on it. Go for it because sometimes it's just your special sauce. Could it be just, you know, your genuine nature, your authenticity is what stands out. And so for many of you, don't choke, just do it. Whatever that looks like, you need to be like Nike, like maybe that needs to be your anthem right now. Just do it. Just do it. Just get it done. Just go after it. Just make it happen. And so I want us to start today in um, in Habakkuk chapter number one. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And it says this in verse number five in the message. It says, look around at the godless nations. Look long and hard and brace yourself for a shock. Something's about to take place and you're going to find it hard to believe. There's another translation that says, brace yourself for a shot. God is gonna getting ready to do something that you have not seen in all of your days. And I do believe that there is something that is getting ready to hit the earth. And yes, it's going to be impacted because of what's going on in the godless nation. But not only that, we can say that America is, you know, a nation that believes in God and all of that. Um, but I want us to stretch it a little further because not only is it that, let's even look at the at the body of Christ, how many churches are you know, what would seem like they're godless. And I'm not one to abuse the church or anything like that. What I am trying to do is bring us to a higher level, a higher level, which looks like kingdom, which looks like the desire of almighty God, where we desire God, where we don't just claim God and it's empty and where we are Ichabod, where the glory has departed out of our lives or out of our churches, though we can put whatever banner we want, though we can wear whatever t-shirts we want, you know, we can do those things, but it doesn't mean that God is present. Has he departed? You know, and so look around to the godless, those that don't demonstrate or reflect God like Christ, like character and nature. And it says, brace yourself for a shot because something's about to take place. God is about to do something that you have not seen in all of your days. You're going to find this hard to believe. And that's why it's so important for us to be tuned in to the spirit of the Lord. And as we're tuned into the spirit of the Lord and what he is going to do, what he is causing to happen. Come on, somebody. As we are able to tap into the spirit of the Lord, those will be the ones that you will have announcements that are coming, that are showing up over you because God is desiring to use you in this hour in Jesus' name. So in the Strong's Concordance, um, the number 321, because again, this started yesterday, March the 21st, that word in the strong concordance, it, uh, it, it actually is spelled A-N-A-G-O, anago. It means to lead up, to offer, by um, tension to bring out, by extension to bring out, especially to sail away, to bring forth again. Hallelujah. It also means to, uh, to also go again, to depart, to launch, launch, to launch forth, to lead up, to loose, to set forth. Come on, somebody, to say to take up. And so God is saying that this is a divine time. Hey, Lady Jess, love you, woman of God. Crown crew, come on through. Now, for us to be able to launch out. And for many of you, even as you know, Jesus told Peter, he said, launch out your net. This is the time where you launch out, where you launch out in the deep. Come on. And because God is going to move even with that, to sail away, to bring, to bring again. Many of you are getting ready to be brought forth again. You're getting ready to come up again up again, up again. This is a time also of divine elevation and promotion. There are others of you where you will depart, where you will launch, where you will launch forth. Hallelujah. These are they that will be sent and not just those who went. That's what God is doing even in this hour in the name of Jesus. And so the next scripture that he wanted me to go to is in the book of Joshua in chapter number three. And I'm going to read this in the message translation. This was, you know, after Joshua had gotten up early and he was on his way and he took the people of Israel with him. And the message, it says he arrived at the Jordan camp before crossing over. So this was the time before crossing over. We have just begun Passover, but we also 
also understand that during Passover was the time that Joshua and the Israelites crossed over into the promised land. And so I want to speak that because while we are entering into Passover during this time, children of God, people of God, it is also important for you to know that this is a time of crossing over, of entering into where God is sending many of you. And so thereby the announcements are coming. Come on, somebody. And that's what happened in the previous chapter of Joshua chapter number two, when, you know, Joshua has sent two spies over. And even when Rahab saw them and she was like, oh, we, oh, we know all about you, where the announcement had already come. There are people, I want to decree that over you in the name of Jesus, that they know you were coming. There were some, they were not happy about, you know, this arrival because they felt like it was going to threaten them. And those who were not supposed to be there, oh yeah, they should be threatened because God is causing you to not just cross over, but this is a divine takeover. I should have worn my kingdom takeover shot short. You know, we are the kingdom of God and we don't take sides. Come on, Apostle Giles, we take over. And so God is calling us in this time of Passover to not just Passover, but to cross over for a takeover. This is not the time where we play nice. This is not the time where we make compromises. That's what got them in trouble in the first place. And so here it is. They're in this time of Passover. He had already told them, go on ahead and pack your bags because in three days we're about to cross over. And that's what it says in Joshua 1 and 11. And I want to speak that over those of you. Many of you might have continued to see the number 111. And, and so even with that, that Joshua chapter number one, verse number 11, he said, pack your bags because in three days you're about to get them on, on up out of here. There are many of you that God is calling forth for you and you're getting ready to enter into a time of transition. You are getting ready to move. There are those of you and it's not just maybe it's going to be into a new place. Maybe it's going to be in a new neighborhood. Maybe it's going to be a new job. Maybe you're coming from your job to owning a business. And then there are others of you. You will have bigger geographical relocations. Come on. You are getting ready to relocate even regionally, saith God. It says, so when you see the covenant chest of God, carried by the Levitical priest, start moving. When you see the Levitical priest carrying the presence of Almighty God, it is time for you to understand that it's time for you to start moving. And I'm standing as a woman of God, as a daughter of God, even before you, to be a voice that is crying loud, even in the wilderness, so to speak, hallelujah, saying that it's time moving. We are carrying the presence of Almighty God as we are moving forth, as we are going forth, as we are charging forward. And it says, I need you to follow it. Not only follow it, but make sure though that you keep a proper distance between you and it, between you and the presence of God. They say about a half a mile here. Be sure, hallelujah, that you keep your distance. Be sure now to keep your distance and you'll see clearly the route to take. There are some of you you're like, God, I don't know which way to go. He says, make sure you make room for my presence because that's how you're going to know which way to go. That's how you're going to know when to step out. And there was a scripture in 1 Samuel chapter number five. And the Bible says that when you hear the sound of the whistling in the trees, of the rustling of the trees, he said, that's when you'll know that will be your sign for you to move forward because that means that God has already gone ahead of you. His presence has already gone ahead of you, saith the Lord. And so when you see this, it says, keep your distance and then you'll know clearly what route to take. And for many, it will be the timing as well. It says, you've not been this way before. You've never been on this road before. I know that there are many of you, you've had different experiences, but this right here, you ain't been this way before. And then Joshua, it says, address the people, sanctify yourselves. There have been so many sons and daughters of God. We kicked off this year, matter of fact, with Apostle Joshua Giles, with the 21 day fast and consecration. Uh, we started on January 2nd, 1, 2 through January 22, uh, 2024. And during that fast, it was sanctify yourselves, consecrate yourselves. It says this, for tomorrow, God will work miracle wonders among you. I want to release that over your life in the name of Jesus, that this is the time for you to be consecrated, for you to consecrate yourself, for you to sanctify yourself, because God is getting ready to do and work miracle wonders among 
among you. What I love of, about that is even in as far as a gift of the spirit, it talks about, you know, the working of miracles. Some miracles you got to work and not everything is instantaneous. And so he says, God is about to work miracle wonders among you. Some of you, hallelujah, you're like, God, I haven't seen you do it yet because he's working that thing out. He's working that miracle out over your life. Let me continue. It says, and so Joshua instructed the priest, take up the chest of the covenant or take up the, it carried the presence. It represented the presence of God. It says, and step out before the people. God is saying that this is the time, hallelujah, for the priest, for the cloth, the men of the cloth, the women of the cloth, even those who have been, for them to take up the presence of God and to step out before the people. And hallelujah. Many are the called, but few are chosen. And then also with that, it's those who have been, had the call. That's why it's not like you want to run for a call that God has not graced you for, anointed you for, or mantled you for. Why? Because if you do that, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it comes with a weightier responsibility. They would be judged more harshly. There is an expectation. And so as judgment is coming and it's coming first for the house of God, and as the Lord spoke to me, it's coming from the pit to the parking lot, the pulpit to the parking lot, the whole gamut. God is doing it. And so this is a time where God is calling forth for his men, his women of God. And that's you people of God. We are the kingdom of God for us to take up the presence of God and to step out even before the people for many, like I spoke about of the godless nations, those who don't have God, they don't know God. It's time for you, beloved, whoever you are, wherever you, to take the presence of God and step out before the people. It says, so they took it up and processed before the people. They processed before the people. Then God said to Joshua, this very day, I will begin to make you great in the eyes of all Israel. Listen, people of God, this very day, God is getting ready to exalt you and make you great even before the other people of God. In that Hallelujah. You man of God, you daughter of God, God is making you great. He's going to make you great in the eyes of all the people. There are things that are yet to take place. There are things that are yet to come forth, but God is saying, even this day, I'm making you great before the people, before all the eyes of all Israel. It says, even so, they'll see See for themselves that I'm with you. I am with you. In the same way that I was with Moses, you will command the priests who are carrying the chest of the covenant. In the same way I was with Moses, so too will I be with you. There are some of you who are literally carrying the torch. A mantle was passed on to you, whether it was generationally, whether it was through others who you've been connected to. But God is saying, in the same way I was with the generals, I was with the pioneers, so too saith God that I will be with you. It says to us, and you will command, you will command the priests who are carrying it. And when you come to the edge of the Jordan's waters, stand there on the river bank. And so then Joshua addressed the people of Israel. Joshua addressed the people. This is a time of a Joshua generation. We are those who, you know, are not, you know, from the old way of doing things. Though we honor that which has gone before us, we are those who are not bound, you know, through the spirit of religion or traditionalism. Though, like I like to say, which I got from my mentor, you know, I'm old school, you know, with the new school twist, there are certain ways that do not shift, that they do not change right? You know, but the methodologies do change. And so we're open to that. And I believe God that many of you are those as well, who is desiring to be able to carry this message of the gospel and the kingdom forward in the name of Jesus. And so he addressed the people, attention, listen to your God, what your God has to say. This is how you'll know that God is alive among you. He will completely dispossess every enemy that is stand before you. And I'm telling you people of God, those those of you who know that you have a calling of God over your life in Jesus name, that God is going to completely dispossess everything that has been standing before you and even in your way. So again, announcements are coming. Announcements are coming. And not only are they coming, but when they come over your life, don't you dare choke. Even in that word that I just read, Joshua could not choke and neither can you. Come on, people of God. And so now the significance of today, March the 22nd or three 
322. God had me to look up that number in the Strong's Concordance. And I want to read that to us. The word is anadekanumi, anadekanumi, and it means to lift up, to show, to show forth. I show forth, and I believe that we are showing forth God's glory. It also means to show clearly, hence, to proclaim. It means a person's appointment to an office or to a point. And so, as the Lord is saying that many of you announcements are coming, you are getting ready to be appointed. God is calling forth for you to be appointed in this season and in this hour because there is a work that is necessary to be done. And he has chosen you to carry out that work. And so that scripture is referenced for this um, in Acts chapter number one, verse number 24. I, I want to start here in verse number 21. It says, Judas must now be replaced. There are some that God is saying, you know, I, I need to replace them. Judas, he betrayed the Lord. He sold him out, but it was necessary. Judas was necessary. That's why Jesus was able to say, you know, kiss him and call him his friend because there are some that love you so much that they won't allow you to go on and carry forth on in your destiny. The things that God is calling you, they love you too much or, you know, they, um, they, they, you know, push their fears or project their fears out on you and that kind of thing. And so, you know, even with Peter, he was like, no, Lord, you can't die. Oh, we ain't having that. No. And all that. And God, Jesus was like, get up behind me, Satan. And Satan is anything, anyone that is opposing the work of God being done in your life. And so that's why, you know, in the word, Joshua said, God is going to completely dispossess every enemy. And so Jesus called Judas his friend because he was helping him progress forward onto his destiny. And there are some people who have sold you out, but God was allowing it. He was using them so that you would step forward in your destiny. And some of you have to be able to, you know, kiss other people goodbye because they are not going to be the ones in that essence. They're holding you back from going forward in your destiny, but we don't get them, get rid of them completely. You know, even Jesus, he said, Peter, the enemy has desired to sift you as wheat, but I've already prayed for you. I've already already pray for you because when you are converted, you'll come back and strengthen your, your brethren. I have use for you at another time, but some of you, it's okay for you to let lot go now because they are in your way for what you need to do to be able to do what you need to do. As far as the destiny that God has ordered over your life, you'll be able to come and get them later. And Jesus did. He came and got them later after the deed was done and he did what he needed to do because he couldn't be there. But unlike that, but John was able to be there. There are some people who know how to love you and they know how to play their part. They love you and they know how to play their part. They know their seat. They know their role. And they're not trying to take a place that there's not theirs anymore. It's not theirs anymore. They've already done what they needed to do in that essence. And so anyway, Judas too, he could have been restored, but he got rid of himself, you know? And so we already understand that account for many of you. Judas Iscariot, and you know, he jumped off the cliff and, you know, and all that kind of, and so I believe it's now called the Valley of Skulls or what have you. And so with that, he didn't repent. This is a time where judgment and justice is happening and where an opportunity for repentance is, but there are some who will not repent. And so they are needing to be replaced. And so that is what God is ordering. And so the announcements of the replacements are upon us. The announcements are also that the replacements are here. And many of you, you will be that replacement. It says, so Judas must now be replaced. The replacement must come. And I want to say this too, because in Numbers chapter number 14, I've spoken of that before. God is tying all these messages together. But um, when there was those who would not do what God said, which was go up and possess the land. And God was like, bet, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it to your children. Your children are going to go ahead and possess it, right? And so, you know, in other words, he said, no, I'm doing it with them. He replaced them. There are those who would not fulfill the destiny that God placed over their life. Maybe, you know, things happen. Maybe they didn't agree to do their part, whatever the case may be. And God is saying, I'm doing something else. I'm, I'm going with somebody. And, and, and so we love them. We bless them. And, you know, and so they raised them as, as far as that next generation, as well as they did until they died off. And then it was for the Joshua generation to go forth and go forward in the things that God had called them to do. It was the replacement. And so some of you are going to pick up the mantle that maybe those who went before you, they left or they dropped or they didn't finish or they didn't continue, right? 
There are those of you who might have come from families who had the family business, but for whatever reason, they didn't continue in it. There are those that maybe they didn't continue on in their marriage. And, you know, and you will be those that are able, instead of being fearful of whether or not your marriage will make it, and maybe people have projected their fears on unto you. And so, but no, you're the one who is going to have that marriage that not just makes it, but thrives. You're getting ready to change literally the generational trajectory of your family and of your bloodline, saith God in Jesus' name. And I'm one, I come from, you know, there was a lot of, I won't say failed marriages, a lot of them just didn't make it there, right? Or, you know, uh, common law marriages, I would say, a lot of those, a lot of those. And God is saying, I'm going to use you, I'm going to use your marriage to be what overturns what has been before. And so, hallelujah, many of you are picking up that mantle that some didn't carry, that some didn't continue on with, but God is going to to use you for that purpose in Jesus name. And so Judas must now be replaced. The replacement must come from the company of men who stayed together with us from the time Jesus was baptized by John up to the day of his ascension. And that's what they reference as apostles. You know, um, we understand them to be the sent ones and not just, you know, those who saw Jesus when he went up, but there's something to be spoke of that. And so um, it says designated along with us as a witness to to his resurrection. They were witnesses to Jesus' resurrection. And so further or above in that verse, it talks about how, you know, nobody knows the time except for God. But Jesus said, I got to go because the promise is coming. It says that in Acts chapter number one, verse number eight, it says, you don't get to know the time, but God is gracious enough to let us know that this is the season that we're entering into. It says, timing is the father's business. What you'll get is the promise. Timing is the father's business, but what you're getting, beloved, is the promise. And in that reference, it was of the Holy Spirit. Many of you, what you're going to get, though you weren't aware of all of the timing of God, you're going to get the promise. It's coming in the name of Jesus. And when it comes, you will be a witness that God did it. Let me go ahead and jump to verse number 23. It says this, they nominated two, Joseph Barsabbas, named Justice and Matthias. Then they prayed, interesting, his name was Justice. Then they prayed, you, oh God, know every one of us inside and out. These decisions need to be made in the place of prayer. It says, make plain which of these two men you choose to take place in the ministry and leadership that Judas threw away in order to go his own way. There are some who went their own way, but there are others of you that you stayed this course and you stayed faithful. Hallelujah. And God is going to use you to be the replacement in Jesus name. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And so it says to us, then they drew straws or lots. Really what the Feast of Purim is about, the word Purim represents lots. We are going into Purim as of tomorrow at sundown. And so with this being a holiday or a time where they drew lots, so too, even with this word, they were drawing straws or they were drawing lots. And so God is confirming through his word that this is the time that this is happening where many will be chosen. Hallelujah. But I know it says few are called, many are called, but few are chosen. But God is saying that there are those of you. In other words, it's not limited to one person. There are many of you that will be chosen ones that God is desiring to use. And so they drew lots or they drew straws. Even during this time of Purim, God is activating this. And it says, and Matthias lot was drawn or Matthias won and was counted in with the 11 apostles. This is the time for those of you who have felt like you didn't qualify before that he wasn't originally a disciple. And there are some of you who felt like, you know, you're not going to make the cut because maybe you didn't make the original cut. Maybe you weren't the originally the choice, but God is saying there are those who might have counted you out, but God counted you in. God counted you in. The lot fell to you and the lot is coming to you in Jesus. Jesus name. And so the announcements are coming that you are one of the ones that is chosen by almighty God in this hour. And so when the announcement takes place, when it's your time to take your place, don't choke, don't choke because God has counted you in chosen one. Don't choke. Listen in the word of the Lord in Luke chapter number 10, this is the last scripture I plan on going to tonight and the message translation 
I'm going to start here at verse number one. It says, later the master selected 70. In other translations, it says 72. But when you look at the number 70, seven represents um, a number for perfection, for completion, also for covenant and for rest. And then with that being multiply or the multiplier of 10, which is a number, a, a multiplier divine, um, it represents divine or a completion of an order or a cycle. God is saying, hallelujah, that even this is confirming that now is the time for that. Blessing to you, Lady Jackie. Much love to you, woman of God. And Lady Beverly, crown crew, come on through. And so he selected 70, selected, chosen. The lots were given to these 70. They were counted in. It says, and he sent them ahead of him. Hallelujah. God is saying this is a time where he is choosing those that he is sending even ahead of himself, ahead of Jesus's return. And it says, and he sent them in pairs or two by two. To. He sent them in pairs. And many of you, God is causing you to come together with your kingdom connections, with your kingdom marriage partner. You're going to come together with purpose partners. This is a time of divine collaboration. And it's going to be those who are coming into purpose partnerships and purposeful partnerships that God is going to use even in this time and even in this hour. Hallelujah. He sent them off in pairs. And so whether it be, you know, ministry partners and, you know, I heard this, it just came to me, ministry moguls. There are some of you, hallelujah, that God is causing you to be power couples for the kingdom of God in Jesus' name. And so it says in pairs to every town and place where he intended to go. He gave them this charge. What a huge harvest. Again, as I spoke yesterday, that this is a time of divine harvest for the people of God. We are coming into the early spring harvest, right? Even with this being springtime, spring is springing and spring is sprung, y'all. Come on, somebody. And so this is a time of divine harvest. When we look at the book of Ruth, when we look at this time of Purim, it happened even in the month of Adar, right? Which was the time of spring harvest. And God is even using this to remind us that now is the time that we are coming into the time of the spring harvest and the harvest is here. Don't you look up at the field? It is here even before you could even expect for it to show up. It's showing up even for you now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. Even now, it's announcement that the spring harvest is showing up. Even the festival of such. The first day of spring, I want to give it to us because I feel led to share that. It actually already begun. <laughs> we just began it this week, even three days ago, three days ago. Imagine that three days. Even Joshua, he told the people, he said, in three days, this is what's getting ready to happen. And for those of you, God is saying that three days is here. It's here even before you knew it. I didn't even realize it's here already. And some of you have been believing God for things. You have been waiting for God on God. You thought for things and it's going to be here before you know it, even before you anticipated it, saith God. And so it says, what a huge harvest. The harvest time is here, somebody. You needed to hear that. And how few the harvest hands. So on your knees, ask the God of the harvest to send harvest hands. This is a time where you ask the God of the harvest to send harvest hands. Again, it was time of the barley harvest, the wheat harvest, you know, even the spring harvest. That's when Ruth went into Boaz as they were harvesting at actually the harvest time had just completed, right? And so she went into him and says like, boo, I'm I'm available or bam, I'm available. And, you know, rest well, dear daughter, was what the end of the verse said, because the man is not going to rest until this matter is resolved. And there have been those of you, you have been worried. Is it going to work out? Is it going to happen? And even as, it, even with the book of Ruth, it's not a book where, you know, all these things are described, but Boaz is a representative of our kinsman redeemer, which is Jesus, right? And even that reflection, so being with the book of Esther during this time of Purim, where the name God is not mentioned, not one time, but God is all through the book. There are those of you who have been in this time where you have felt like you have been hidden, even as God's name was hidden in that book, but he was all throughout it. And there are some of you, you haven't been able to put your finger on it. It seemed like it's in, but God has been literally working behind the scenes. And I want to encourage you from that Ruth 3.18, that while you're in this process of it literally taking place over this full harvest 
season, that you rest well, that you know that God already has a resolve because he as your kinsman redeemer and whoever that man of God is, he knows what his instructions are and he's not going to rest until this matter is resolved this day, it says. And immediately that man of God, he went to the gate to handle business. He was standing on business because men, men who were respected, they were found at the gate and they took care of business at the gate. And, and even as God has spoke that this is a time where portals are open, where the heavens are open above us, there are men of God who are going forth and you daughters of God too, right? Where you are handling business at the gate. You are allowing God to make it do what it do. And there are some people who will reject it, right? It was the one who was the nearest of kin who was like, nah, I ain't willing to do that. He gave up his shoe. He was like, that's all right. You know, he was willing to take that ill. And there are some for the sake of pride, they're not willing to pay the, pay, pay the price. And so they're willing to give it up. But there are some people who will pay the price and then some because they know how much more is coming with that. Come on, somebody. You know, when he took on, you know, Ruth and, you know, also he had Naomi and everything that had belonged to Malon. Come on. This is something where you are going to reap a harvest and an inheritance that is even greater than just you had. And there are some of you that you are working in the fields that God is calling for you to own. In Jesus' mighty name. So it was a time of harvest. And God is saying, even that with this is that harvest time, even over your life in Jesus' name. And Father, I thank you that you're going to give your sons courage. You're going to give your daughters courage so that they don't choke with these announcements. So they don't choke as it's time for them to go handle business at the gate, the gate, the gate, the gates, the gates, the doors, even as 2024, 5784, the year of the door, the gate, the portal, it all is the same thing. And men handle business at the gates. That's where the city elders were. And that's where the men who were respected were. And I believe God that he is raising up sons and daughters of God. The Bible says in, in business be men. In other words, be fully mature. Men, women of God, sons, daughters of God, may we be men and mature as we handle business at the gate, the gate, the gate, the gate, the gate, the portal, the gate, even now where you are in Jesus name. So it says, so on your knees, ask the God of the harvest to send harvest hands. This is a time for you to be in prayer. And there are those of you, maybe you're like me and you're on this dry fast till tomorrow at sundown or what have you. This is a time that we are in prayer. Hallelujah. That God would send the harvest, uh, harvest hands to for the God of the harvest to send the harvest hands. It says on your way, but be careful. This is hazardous work, you know, on your way. This is a time for you to be on your way. This is a time for you to go forth and what God has called forth for you to do. It also says this, but be careful. In, 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 in another translation, it speaks to us in one of the verses, and it says, to be wise as serpents, gentle as doves. And Jesus says, I'm sending you a sheep even out amongst wolves. We're getting ready to read that. It says, on your way, but be careful. This is hazardous work. You are like lambs in a wolf pack. You're like lambs in a wolf pack. But God, again, the warning first came in Joshua chapter number three. You ain't been this way before. But as long as you are taking the presence of God with you, you'll have everything that you need. He says this, this was the instruction, travel light. So in the book of Joshua, we just read how he said, pack your bags. Because in three days, you're about to roll up out of here. We've already, already noticed that this has been the three days, right? Okay, we're already in spring. We're already in that divine timing. Pack your bags. And he says here, travel light. That's the word for somebody. Everything can't go with you. Everybody can't go with you in that capacity. You'll come get them as you do, you know, what have you. She said things are lining up. It was 234 people on here. Travel light. It says comb and a toothbrush. All you need, the basics. And no extra baggage. No extra luggage. This is not the time for you to carry extra luggage with you extra baggage with you. This is the time. What do we do during the spring? Spring cleaning. There are some of you, you need to tie up those loose ends, get rid of those old things. It says, and don't, don't loiter and make small talk with everyone you meet along the way. This is not the time where you give everybody your time and your attention. You've got to make it do what it do. Hey, Lady Dion Riley, I believe that you did a move recently as well. To God be the glory. You stepped out on faith. Don't loiter. Don't just be out there taking up space. This is the time for you to be in 
intentional. This is instruction that's coming with this word for those that it is for. The, the announcements are coming for. The announcements are coming too so you don't choke. It says to us, it says, so don't be over there making small talk with everybody you meet. Some people you will need to connect with, but not everyone. It says, when you enter a home, greet the family peace. If your greeting is received, then it's a good place to stay. But if it's not received, take it back and get out. Don't impose yourself. There are those of you, you know, listen, if the welcome ain't there, get to going, get to stepping. Everybody is not going to welcome you in and that's okay. That means that they weren't assigned to you. You weren't assigned to them. You got to be willing to go and make it do what it do. And so it goes on to say, stay at one home, taking your meals there for a worker deserves three square meals. In other words, you know, don't be out here, you know, doing the food. Don't be out here you know, um, trying to, uh, to, to, uh, be here, there and everywhere. This is not time for that. This is not the time for you to pursue every word that you want, that you feel like is going to work for you. This is not the time for you to be out here with everybody. This is the time for you to really hone in on the things of God. He says, I want you to stay at home, taking your meals there for a worker deserves three square meals. Don't move on from house to house, looking for the best cook in town. This is not the the time for you to be house hopping. This is not the time for you to be trying to find, you know, what you want, but this is the time to press in. There's a song and uh, it talks about love who love you. Sometimes we're so busy looking for the next best thing, you know, that we're passing up the thing that God wants us rocking with right there. There are so many times, you know, we're trying to get to the greatest that we miss out on the great and something else was never what was coming. Let me continue. So it says, when you enter a town and you are received, eat what they set before you. Heal anyone who is sick and tell them God's kingdom is right on your doorstep. This is not the time for you to be ungrateful. It says, eat what they set before you. I was just, thank you, Lord, um, in Israel and Greece last year. And there are other cultures and just people in jail, like they will get offended if you don't want their food. If you don't like, they said, eat what's set before you. This is the time for you to know how you were raised, for you to have good manners, except for when it's a meat and you don't know what kind of meat that is. <laughs> if you know, you know. It says, eat what they set before you. Heal anyone who is sick. In other words, God is saying, do my work. And tell them God's kingdom is right on your doorstep. It's all about the kingdom. It says, and when you enter a town and you're not received, go out in the street and say, the only thing we got from you is the dirt on our feet and we're giving it right back. Hallelujah. This is not the time for you to keep it. You know, if people are dishing out garbage, you are not the garbage pail. You are not, do you know what I'm saying? It's time for you to give it right back. You're not keeping none of that. Don't allow it to be in your spirit. Don't let it fester even in you. It's time for you to give it back release it don't take it it said did you have any idea that god's kingdom was right on your doorstep sodom would have it better on judgment day than the town that rejects you and so it's important for you to know what you carry beloved he says sodom would have it better than those who reject you because when they reject you and you stand in me they're really rejecting the lord it ain't even about you like that but because you carry me they would be better off and so know what you carry know what you carry sons and daughter of god and interest Interestingly here, he mentions judgment day. And even as the Lord spoke to us yesterday, that judgment day is coming and it's even here. That God is getting ready to shake things up according to Habakkuk 1 and 5, that first scripture we read. It said, doom, Torazim, doom, Bethsaida. If Tyree and Sidon had been given half the chances given you, they've been on their knees long ago, repenting and crying for mercy. There are some who still will not heed what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. There are some, if they had been given the chances like some others, they would have repented long ago. But God is also raising up those who will go. They will cry loud and they will spare not. And there are some towns like Nineveh where people are ready to repent. But there are some who are going to be so rebellious and they will not repent. And the Lord have mercy on them. Listen, he says, crying for mercy. Tyree and Sidon will have it easy on judgment day compared to you because they repented. Lord, I thank you for those who will repent in this hour. Hallelujah, because revival is going to hit the land and God is going to raise up people 
that other people thought would never be the ones. He's raising up the rejected that will not walk in rejection. God is calling forth for there to be healing in the body of Christ. Yes, I know that you've struggled with rejection. Yes, I know that you were rejected, but God is using the rejected, but they can't carry the rejection with them because you have been accepted into the beloved. He's grafted you in. He's counted you in. We just read that. He's counted you in and with him counting you in, you will not carry that rejection, nor will you force it upon others. This is not the time where we handle people maybe like we were handled because of what they went through. God is calling forth for a healed bride. God is calling forth for a healed bride and healing is upon us even now. It says, and you Capernaum, do you think that you are about to be promoted to heaven? Think again, you're on a mudslide to hell. Jesus was letting them have it. The one who listens to you listens to me. Listen, and so it's so important that we know that we speak for God that we speak for God. And he's saying the ones that listen to you are the ones who are listening to me. Know that you carry even the word of God. You carry the voice of God in the name of Jesus. And it says, as they listen to you, they're listening to me. The one who rejects you, they are rejecting me. So don't take it personal. It's about purpose. It says, and rejecting me is the same as rejecting the God, rejecting God who sent me. You are not ones who went as there's 222 of you on here. There are those of you, you were sent. You were sent by Almighty God and God is sending you out. He said, even as sheep, even among what seems to be wolves, you are being launched forth and may you not be one who has this failure to launch out into the deep. Don't be one who fails to launch out into everything as God is calling for. No, you haven't been this way before, but everything is on the other side of you stepping outside of that fear. Everything is on the other side of your comfort zone. Everything is on the other side. And now is the time for you to take over in this crossover period in Jesus' mighty name. And so it says, and the 70 came back triumphant. I want to prophesy that over you, beloved, in the name of Jesus, Lady Tiffany Temple, you are going to come back triumphant. They said, Master, even the demons dance to your tune. The reason why they were triumphant is because they realized that it wasn't about them. Come on, Lady Lena, love you, woman of God. Hallelujah. They said that the demons dance to your tune. They realized that it's not about me. I'm just being used by Almighty God, and God is raising up a people who will not make it about them. They will realize even as we go out in pairs, couples, partners, whatever God is using us to be, I realize that it's not about me, it's not about us, but it's about him. It's about him and they are those who will utilize, who will stand in the name of God. Hallelujah. And because they realized that they were dancing to God's tune and not theirs, they were the ones that God was using and they also came about triumphantly. And it says, and Jesus said, I know I saw Satan fall. Jesus, God said, I know, I know all about it. He said, I saw Satan fall, a bolt of lightning out of the sky. See what I've given you? Safe passage. Listen, the enemy fell out of the sky. The Holy Spirit descended like a dove from the sky. Wow, the portals were open, the heavens were open. And I want to prophesy that over you now in the name of Jesus. Even as the heavens are open, the portals are open during this divine portal as the lots are being cast and it's been found in your favor in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Even as the sky is open and the spirit is descended upon you as you go out. So too has the enemy fallen from the sky. It said that right here. I saw Satan fall, a bolt of lightning out of the sky. So as these portals are open, so is the enemy being defeated in the name of Jesus. Somebody need to catch that word. You've been afraid of what the devil going to do? No. During this divine portal, during this heavenly portal being opened over your life, the enemy is going to fall. Every enemy will fall. Somebody put that in the chat. Every enemy will fall. It says, see what I've given you. Safe passage as you walk Walk on snakes and scorpions and protection from every assault of the enemy. That Psalm 91 that you've been praying, come on. 
hallelujah, where the spirit is upon you. The angels of the Lord are guarding you and guiding you and there shall by nothing harm you because you belong to him. It says no one can put a hand on you. All the same, the great triumph is not in your authority over evil. In other words, you know, here is the gotcha, gotcha. You know, here is the real clutch. Like here is the real win. This says the great triumph is not in your authority over evil. It says, but in God's authority over you, you, you your submission to the Lord. It says, and his presence with you. Like that's the real win. Like that's the real flex is because not just that you got, a, you know, a, this authority over the devil, but the flex is God's authority over you and his presence with you. The fact that he can use you, that's the real flex. The use you, you y'all, the two of you. It says not what you do for God, but what God does for you. That's the flex. It says that's the agenda for rejoicing. Jesus told them, y'all, this is the agenda for rejoicing, not what you do for God. Only what you do for Christ is going to last. But what God does for you, what God does in you, what God does through you, it says at that Jesus rejoice. Y'all, I'm so excited about Jesus rejoicing over me, rejoicing over you, and Jesus rejoicing about how you about to flex in this earth for his name's sake, in Jesus name. It says at that Jesus rejoice, exuberant in the Holy Spirit saying, I thank you, Father, master of heaven and earth, that you hid these things from the know-it-alls. Again, the whole book of Esther. She had been hidden. Her identity had been hidden for so long. She was Hadassah. She was a Jew. She was from the, she was an Israelite. Not only that, was it even hidden, but even the awareness that she was royalty the whole time. She was royalty the whole time. Even as we're talking about Purim, she was royalty the, because she was the great, 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 great granddaughter of Saul. It was in her blood. There are those of you, you might have felt hidden. You might have felt overlooked, but it's been been in you the whole time in the first place. God has been using you and God is causing forth for you to be used by him in the name of Jesus. And it says, master of heaven and earth that you hid these things from the know-it-all. This is being hidden from everybody who think they know everything. This is being hidden from those. They're going to come and they're going to look for the true, the, the authentic, the pure anointing, the pure fire of almighty God, because they're going to realize that that stuff they got from the enemy, that stuff that they got from the world, even the gifts that are without repentance, it's not enough. It's not packing the power like God has. And so God has hid these things from the know-it-all. Come on, in the name of Jesus, but he revealed it to you because he reveals his secrets. He says in Jeremiah 33 and 3, call unto me and I will answer you and I will show you great and mighty. Daniel said in Daniel chapter number two, it says great is this because God has given, he's revealed the mystery. God reveals mysteries even to his servants that he can trust. He reveals the mysteries to his saints. And even as I was speaking about replacement, it says that in Daniel chapter number two, verse number 19 through 22, it ends up speaking of, about how God was set one down and he will raise up another. This is a time where God is going to cause some to be set down while he's also raising up others in Jesus name. It says, master of heaven and earth, that you hid these things from the know-it-all. Jesus was thanking them for it and showed them to these innocent newcomers. Hallelujah. I have to say this right there. He showed it to them, these new innocent newcomers. There are some of you, you might be new to the fold. You might be new to the scene. There are some who are going to be new to the faith, but they are innocent and they are coming. The great revival, the harvest is coming. And God is saying, I'm not going to wait to reveal my secrets even to you. You might seem like you knew. You might seem like you don't know everything that other people know, but you know God. You are innocent. You have a heart for God. And that's who he is going to show and reveal these mysteries to in Jesus' name. The Bible says in Amos chapter number three, verse number seven, that he reveals, he, God does nothing in the earth without first revealing it to his servants, the prophets. He's going to reveal, hallelujah, even his secrets to those that he can trust. It says, yes, Father, it please you to do it this way. Those that he can call his friends. He says, I've been given it all by my father. Only the father knows who the son is and the son knows who the father is. The son can introduce the father to anyone he wants to. 
There are some who felt like there are those who didn't qualify, who were the least likely, but Jesus can introduce his father to whoever he wants to. And for some of you, God is getting ready to introduce you to his father on a whole nother way, in a whole nother realm, in a whole nother dimension. And he's also getting ready to announce you to people like you've never known before, because Jesus can announce you to whomever he chooses. And he is choosing you to announce you to the world. He then turned aside privately to his disciples and he said, fortunate the eyes to see that which you're seeing. Some of you, your ability to see these things. For some of you, even to hear these things, even now. There are plenty of prophets and kings who have given their right arm to see what you're seeing, but they never got so much as a glimpse to hear what you're hearing, but never got so much as a whisper. But Jesus is saying that you're seeing it, that you're going to see it. Be it unto you in Jesus' name. These announcements are coming and God is saying that he is not going to hold back in this season. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. I thank you, Lord God, for this word. I thank you, Lord God, that the announcements are coming. I thank you, Lord God, hallelujah, that they're not going to choke, that they're not going to be afraid, that they're not going to be fearful. I thank you, Lord, for those that they're going to have to, like Peter, know that they're going to do what they do. They're going to pray for them, Lord, and they'll come and get them after the business has been handled, after everything been taken care of, Lord because they are not going to be moved by others, by the fear of others, by the projection of fears of others, but they will move forward and they will do what you are called forth for them to do in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, for those who you are promoting in this hour. Hallelujah for those that you are elevating for this hour. And oh, Lord God, there's been a time of repentance, Lord. Hallelujah, even for those that you are getting ready to set down. The heart of the king is in your hand and you turn it whithersoever you will. Hallelujah. It's the glory of you, O oh God, to conceal a matter, but it's the glory of kings to search it out. And there have been those who have been searching it out. There have been those, hallelujah, that you're raising up as kings, Lord, who are searching out your heart of the matter and who you want them to even promote in the earth. Father, I thank you for every business announcement that is being announced. I thank you, Lord God, for every home homecoming and every um, housewarming that is going to be announced in the name of Jesus, Father. I thank you, Lord, for every business launch, every grand reopening that is getting ready to be announced in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for every church launch that is getting ready to be announced, every ministry opportunity that is getting ready to be announced. Lord, I thank you, Lord God. I thank you, Lord, for every promotion that's getting ready to be announced in the name of Jesus, every graduation that is getting ready to be announced. I thank you, Lord God, for every engagement engagement announcement that is coming, every wedding announcement that is coming, every bridal announcement that is coming, every baby announcement that is coming in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord God, that the announcements are coming. I thank you, Lord, for the announcement of growth that is coming. I thank you, Lord God, for every announcement that is coming of new financial status. Is there a those of you who are going to be announced as a millionaire, multimillionaire, and then there are others of you who are getting ready to be announced as billionaires. In the name of Jesus, Father, we come into agreement with your word, and we say, yes, oh God, be it unto us as you have spoken, according to Luke 138, amen and amen. Listen, beloveds, I had to announce this to you. Thank you so much courage of the Holy Spirit be unto you, Lady Lisa. I had to say this. There was um, a, a, a clip that was done. There was a woman of God, and um, she was saying that she didn't even realize that she had become a billionaire. She didn't even realize it. She knew that she was getting close. She was in the multi-millions or whatever, and so um, she had called and um, or received a call from one of her financial um, uh, accountants, and so he was uh, calling to announce to her that he couldn't service her anymore, and she was was like what you mean what you talking about and he, she and what was told to her is that she needed to find someone who could be able to assist her with this income status with this new level of income status let me um get the actual title because i want to make this announcement over those of you in jesus name god is calling forth for me to make this announcement because this too will be your portion in jesus mighty name this is what the lord is speaking over you this is what he is declaring 
hovering over you and the announcement we just decree and declare in the name of Jesus that it is coming. In the name of Jesus. And this is will how this will be how you are acknowledged in the name of Jesus. This woman had already had a failed suicide attempt. And she, she says she became a billionaire and didn't even know it. And this was Dr. Trish Bailey. Hallelujah. And so what they ended up calling her, even after her failed suicide attempt, was extreme ultra net worth. God is saying that he is raising up extreme ultra net worth individuals. So too shall it be your portion in the name of Jesus. It was beyond what she had imagined. And I believe God that literally it's getting ready to happen for many of the children of God because you can be trusted with his wealth, because you can be trusted to utilize it for the purpose of almighty God. And so God is saying that it is coming unto you. I just had to get your new title. You might want to put it in the chat. I am an extreme ultra net worth individual. Be it unto you for the for the kingdom of God's sake, because he can trust you with it. In the name of Jesus, you will be like Joseph. There are many of you who will carry the anointing of Joseph. And when I say that, that means, hallelujah, there are things that he went through. He even had experience, even with his family. And, he, you know, he was like, y'all might have meant it for evil, but it was actually God who was sending me ahead of you. They might have thought that they were putting you in a pit. They might have thought that, you know, you were over here in Potiphar's house. Potiphar thought he was just putting him in the prison, but he was literally preparing him for the palace in the Rabosaya. And so, at all in all, what Joseph was able to say, it was God that was sending me ahead. There are some of you, had they not closed the door on you, there are those of you, had they not, you know, treated you the way that they did or not accepted you, you might not have clung to the cross. You might not have built things the way that you have that would absolutely position you. But the thing about Joseph, Joseph kept the right heart. There was a clip Apostle Giles posted on Instagram and Facebook, um, Joshua Giles. I make the distinguishment because uh, Apostle Deborah Giles, I love her woman of God. Uh, she's on her book tour. Y'all get uh, prophetic kids, raising prophetic kids. You can catch it on Amazon. Nonetheless, I digress. And so um, it was a post posted on Instagram from the last prophetic forecast, not this Monday, but the Monday before. And in that, what was speaking, it was people that have been faithful, who are stewarded well, the things that God has given them, who have the right heart, who have the right spirit. Listen, y'all and who have the right motive and purpose, those are the ones that God is going to trust even with this level of wealth. So be it unto you in Jesus' name. Listen, beloveds, I love y'all with the love of the Lord. Be it unto you in Jesus' name. Somebody might want to put that in the chat. My announcement is coming. My announcement is coming. Listen, that woman of God had to have her advisor and make the announcement to her that she had become a billionaire and she didn't even know it. There are many who have become millionaires billionaires. Hallelujah. And so the next is billionaire status for you in Jesus mighty name. God is going to bring you into the place. He's going to give you what you need. He's going to connect you with the people that is going to cause you to change literally the trajectory. Like it's going to go in multiplication like you've not known before. And it's going to happen rapidly, saith God in Jesus name. Now there are those of you, if you desire to put the, you know, partner with this word, you can do that at paypal.me forward slash Lady Jeremiah. The Venmo is the same or the cash app is dollar sign in mana one, you know, whatever you feel led to put in the tab, but I want to agree with God with you. You can put my announcement is coming. Whatever that announcement is going to be, you can find the information also at Lady Jeremiah, super thanks and chats and whatever. God bless you all. We praise God for you. And I release Deuteronomy 1 and 11 over you that the God of our ancestors, that he would increase you a thousand times more than you already are in Jesus name. Yes, Lady Erica, be it unto you. Yes, Lady Dion, be it unto you. Come on, Lady Miss Wu, Lady uh, Jet Ellison, be it unto you. Lady Rosalind, Lady Jackie, blessings unto you. Come on, Lady Laquita, Lady Nancy, be it unto you in Jesus' name. A young brown rose, be it unto you. Lady Jackie, Brother Jackie, be it unto you. Lady Nikki, be it unto you. Lady Tamara Sip, Lady Levita, be it unto you. Crown Crew, come on through. Be it unto you all. I love you so much, and we will connect again very, very very soon because God is saying that your announcement is coming. It is being announced over you, Lady Jamie Ann. God is doing it. So and when he does it, don't choke. Not if, but when. 
Don't failure to launch out in the deep. Prepare yourself for a great catch. Maybe it didn't work before, but this is the time for you to cast your nets again. Nets, plural. Cast your nets again. And what did Peter say? Nevertheless, at thy will. And he pulled in a great catch. It was more than he could handle. It was enough where everybody else was blessed. And I believe that it will be for you all as well. Listen, I will not choke and neither will you. God bless. Talk soon.